Hello, Jessica Frost Ballas here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm stop on the Honeybee Stamps YouTube hop celebrating the newest Make It Merry release. I'm sharing a cheery Christmas card with a fun surprise. There's a sliding switch on my card and when you swipe your finger across the sentiment the card lights up. So let's get started. First I've taped the snowflake layer of the Nordic Winter Stencil onto a panel of blue cardstock. I use blending brushes to apply prize ribbon and chip sapphire distress oxide ink over the stencil, concentrating the chip sapphire around the edge. Once I'm happy with the blend, I remove the stencil and let the panel dry completely before trimming it down to an A2 panel. While it's drying, I stamp the adorable bear from Bear Hugs onto white cardstock with Copic Friendly ink. I use Y35 and 38 for the star on his head and R0 and R02 for his ears. I color him with cool gray Copic markers in C5, 3, 1, and 00. Finally, I color his scarf with R89, 35, 37, and 39. I use a pencil to mark six lights of the light strand, and then I use single Copic markers to color the lights in a rainbow. The lights I marked with the pencil will be the lights that eventually light up. I use R29, YR07, Y38, YG07, B16, and V06 Copic markers to color the lights as they're the shades that most closely match my Chibitronics LED light stickers. I die cut my bear with a coordinating die and then use a hole punch to cut out the lights I marked earlier. I adhere the bear to my stencil panel and then place the panel on a foam mat. I use a piercing tool to pierce through the blue cardstock. I can use my hole punch to reach some of the holes and punch the cardstock. For the ones I can't reach, I use my piercing tool to match the hole. Next, I line up an A2 panel of white cardstock behind the stenciled panel and trace the holes onto the white cardstock. Off camera, I added small scraps of vellum behind the blue panel to soften the glow of the lights. Now it's time to build my circuit. I had a bit of a camera problem here and I didn't realize that I had accidentally knocked my arm into the camera stand and tilted the filming angle oddly. By the time I realized it, I had already sealed up my first circuit. So I decided to refilm the circuit building process with another panel. It's not 100% the same as you'll see later, but it's close enough that you'll understand how to create the sliding switch circuit. To start, I use a stencil to trace the triangular shape around each hole. 
The negative part of the sticker is the point, and I trace the shape with the point facing down. This will show me where my light stickers will go. You can also draw a small triangle around each circle if you don't have the stencil. Next, I use my scoreboard to score the bottom of the panel at 5 eighths of an inch. I fold along the score line and use my bone folder to get a sharp crease. Then I trace around my round battery shape on the top left side of my panel. The positive side of my circuit will be on the top of the panel and the negative side will be on the bottom. Just as a reference, I mark the positive and negative side of each stencil triangle. Then I use a pencil and a ruler to draw out my circuit. I've been using Chibitronics lights for years, but I still like to trace out my design before I start working, just to make sure everything is in the correct place. I draw a vertical line from the battery along the left side of the panel, and crossing over the score line, I draw a horizontal line across the bottom of the panel. Then I draw vertical lines from the negative point of each stencil triangle to the score line. Next, I draw a vertical line from the top of the battery along the left side of the panel, and then horizontally across the top of the panel. I connect the long flat side of the stencil triangle to the top line that I drew. Once I have everything drawn out, I adhere conductive fabric tape to the panel as I trace my drawing. I usually try to use as few pieces of tape as possible, and will fold and bend the tape around the corners as needed, but if that's an overwhelming concept, you can simply cut pieces of the fabric tape and overlap them around the corners. You can find another video here showing a more detailed look at applying fabric tape. On the top portion, I adhere a piece of tape along the top of the panel, fold it at a right angle to head towards the battery, and then leave the adhesive backing in place over the battery shape. Eventually, I'll remove the backing and adhere this piece of tape to the top of the battery. This is a tight circuit, so occasionally I need to bend the tape at an angle to avoid crossing lines. On the top portion, I end up making a mistake and you'll see that I have to redo a piece of tape so that I can connect the tape to the top line without crossing lines. Thankfully, the tape peels up easily and can be replaced. Once the tape is in place, I peel up the backing of the one piece and adhere it to the top of the battery. Then I adhere my LED light stickers over the stenciled shapes. I'm using one of each color for the string of lights as well as a white light for the star.
I add a little adhesive under the battery to help it stay in place and now you can see my completed circuit panel. As is, the circuit won't light up because the negative part of the light stickers aren't connected to the battery. But when you fold along the score line, the horizontal line of tape on the bottom touches the vertical lines coming from the point of each sticker and completes the circuit. When you slide your finger along the bottom of the panel, it makes the tapes touch and lights up the stickers. And now I'm back to my original recorded material. As you can see, the circuit looks a little different, but it's still the same idea. I've adhered the circuit panel to a top folding card base, but did not add adhesive to the scored part. Then I add a double layer of foam mounting tape on the panel, avoiding the stickers in the scored area. I add a double layer of foam mounting tape to the very bottom of the card base, and then add a single layer of foam tape over the scored fold. Then I remove the adhesive backing from the foam mounting tape, except for the single layer that covers the scored flap. I carefully adhere my stenciled panel over the circuit card base and then test it one more time. I also add a sentiment from Bear Hugs, which gives you a good place to swipe your finger. When they send this card, I'll add a note telling the recipient how to find the surprise. Off camera, I ended up coloring around the bear with a B24 marker to more closely match the blue cardstock. I also added a few accents with a white gel pen marker and added Nouveau Crystal Glaze and Spectrum Noir Clear Sparkle to the lights. And that's it! You can find more information on the products I used in the YouTube hop in the video description below or over on my blog. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and I'd love for you to subscribe to my channel. If you do subscribe, make sure you click the bell so you're notified the next time I post. Here are a few more videos you might be interested in, and until next time, have an amazing day and happy crafting. Bye!